BMG is potentially going to spend another billion dollars on music acquisitions in 2022 and beyond. We're going to talk about it in today's video. What's up, guys? This is Omari with No Nonsense Music Marketing, the number one music business and industry advice online. If you're not subscribed already, click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get updates on every new video we drop. We drop them every weekday so that you can be updated on the music industry. You need this information today. You need to act on it today. So subscribe, hit that, hit that notification bell. So let's just hop straight into it, guys. BMG, uh, and this is... This is really information we've been talking about, but I want to broaden it out that they have a billion dollars to acquire more song catalogs. So if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you've heard us talk about these in, in the last two years, particularly uh, these acquisitions of big music catalogs like Bruce Springsteen or Gotti. Um, there's been a bunch of them. That have happened, but BMG recently is they're they're trying to get the rights to Pink Floyd, um, their music catalog. And if you guys haven't watched our other videos on how record label deals typically work, you can go watch that. We'll try to link to it in a video card or something. Uh, but what typically happens with the record deals, uh, especially back in the day, is that the artist is going to keep. Uh, a percentage usually of the publishing like they might keep a small percentage of that um, rarely will they keep percentage of their masters until later in their career where they can have some leverage in the deal uh, but when you're initially starting out you really like you have good music but you really don't have the marketing the promotion the distribution uh, the relationships like you you typically don't have any of that you just have the talent so the record label comes in with their business structure and applies all of those resources, especially back in the day when you had to print CDs and, and all that stuff. They applied all those resources to the artist, uh, supplied that. And in return, they obviously need to make some money from all their ad spend, all their marketing spend. So they take a uh, equity percentage in the song. That's the very brief uh, you know, breakdown of how it works now. When these uh, big companies now are talking about acquisitions, typically what they do is go and get funding from investment firms. So there'll be a firm that they partner with and the firm might say, um, you know, we'll, we'll back 500 million. Uh, we'll give you guys 500 million to go acquire uh, the, the catalogs to well-known artists, to, to song catalogs that will be played for years and years. Uh, because as we talked about in previous videos, like 75% of the music on Spotify and streaming services is legacy catalogs. It's not new music out. New music is only played about 25% of the time. Most people are still playing. Uh, they love their decade playlists. They love their classic playlists. Uh, you know, the, the playlists like the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s. Um, those are continually going up in subscribers and they're not slowing down. Uh, so whenever artists get on those playlists, oftentimes when you go look on Spotify and you go look at the discovered on section, if you're on the Spotify, uh, desktop app and you look on the discovered on section, or you can do this on the web, uh, app too, you will see a lot of the times that those playlists are number one for those artists. Those are the most streams they're getting. So, um, as we mentioned previously, so when indie artists, if, if you can get on some of those playlists, especially as you build your catalog, you know, throughout this decade, uh, the previous decade, next decade, you really want to get on some of those playlists because those, especially if you can get a song that sticks on one of them, uh, or a few of them, those playlists get played a ton, um, by 75% of the, of the streams on the platforms. Uh, now investment firms know this and they are now considering as we've seen um even now that we're probably technically in a recession i'm not really seeing these acquisitions slow down on uh the, the music side i'm seeing crypto slow down a ton um the stock market slowing down but i'm not seeing the music acquisitions slow down all that much and the price that they're getting for them we talked about the Irv Gotti um catalog acquisition it was for 300 million dollars and i believe you sold half 
of his catalog. He didn't even sell all of it. Bruce Springsteen sold uh, all the catalog. Bruce Springsteen's catalog, or whoever had the right to it, sold for $500 million. Uh, so these are still premium dollar that musicians uh, and music companies are getting for these catalogs. This It's safe to say at this point that investors with big money are considering music uh, as a mainstream asset. Um, when, especially in a recession, like whenever the money was just flowing, uh, last year, the year, a little bit year before, uh, whenever they pumped all the money into the economy, it was, you know, maybe like, here's just all this money. They're just trying to throw it into place to see if they can get their return before they take it out. Um, but at this point, we're not seeing the numbers drop in the catalogs and people are still investment firms are still backing uh, music companies uh, that are acquiring rights to all these catalogs. So no longer is there this direct relationship between record label and uh, artist and like the record label is the one keeping all the rights. They're just selling them off. Uh, so for, for instance, like a big machine record label where Taylor Swift was um, like once she left, they just sold the record label and they're selling them for top dollar um just like a a tech company would be at this point so say all that to say what what should indie artists do with this information don't sell all your rights anymore it's not necessary to sell all your rights anymore if you're going to do deals the best ones that we offer uh you can say it's biased or whatever, but again, we're explaining why it makes sense. The best deals you can do, especially when you don't have a lot of capital, but you make good music, you can either, you have two options, really. You can pay to promote the music yourself, uh, which a lot of artists do, and they go through our services, our Spotify, playlisting, YouTube promotion, Facebook, Instagram, ads management. Uh, we do all of that. You can find that on mariamc.com, link in the description section. Uh, or you can give up equity just to singles. Like you don't have to do the entire catalog anymore. There's a lot of smaller record labels that are coming up that are still not owned by, uh, you know, Sony uh, and UMG and the the big three. Um, a lot of the indie uh, indie record labels are coming up now because the information is is out there. People can go create their own uh, infrastructure. If you're really good at marketing, like obviously we started as a marketing agency, we're still uh, one of the largest online marketing agencies. But when you have the infrastructure, really the best deal for the artist is just gonna be taking, if an artist wants to do an equity deal and not pay for all the promotion themselves, then the record label can just take equity in the singles or maybe an album or EP. And then the artists, when they keep coming out with new music, can keep their masters. They can keep ownership of their masters going forward, uh, especially if you get to a decent size, like you have a decent YouTube following, decent Instagram following, decent TikTok following, and you're coming out with music. Um, then you have your own leverage. And if you still want to give up equity to partner with other you know, a partner with labels, you can do it at that point, but at least you have the option there. So it's playing the long game. Uh, you either, which we've said before, you either have to have the money or have to have the time uh, to to come in with leverage to, to deals. If it, it can't be that, I, I see a lot of artists with unrealistic expectations of people with resources to just promote you for free, uh, which, over the years, we've seen change, you know, as we've grown because people kind of get that if if a marketer is doing all this work or a record label is doing all this work, why would nobody's going to work for me for free? Uh, just like artists don't want to work for free. Obviously, marketing agencies, record labels can't work for free either. So either give up some equity in singles, not in your entire catalog, or uh, have the money to promote your project. So. Those are really the two options. That's where we're seeing uh, a lot of the money flow in from these investment firms to buy all these big catalogs. Um, seems that every week or every, at the very least, every month we are talking about this, guys. So still pay attention to this. Come out with music often um, because 
you really want to be building your catalog. I know that before it used to be, and obviously not everybody can do this, uh, but before it used to be that you might come out with an album every like one to like two years. Uh, nowadays, that is not the model for it. It really is. You need to come out with songs. Some artists are coming out with songs every two weeks. If you can't do that, I'd say at least every two months so that you can stay uh, on top of this, build your catalog, build your catalog, build your catalog uh, so that you can be in the position one day to, if you want to sell your catalog, you can, or if you just want to live off the the royalties that are all coming in uh, and the sales of your sales funnels and your business structure, um, there's, there's a real chance to build a middle class in music now. So with that being said, if you are not subscribed to this channel, click that subscribe button. This is the type of information we go, uh, that we talk about on this channel. And we've been talking about it for the better part of a year and a half now. So if you had listened to us a year and a half ago, you would already be on your way uh, to a much more solid business structure for your music business. So click that subscribe button, drop us a comment uh, with any questions or thoughts, and we will get in there and help you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.